<laughs> Stop laughing! <laughs> you go woke, you go broke. You please the fans. You get him in the stands. <laughs> well, well, well. Disney, have you ever experienced true fear? Right, my friend. Let me ask you, does a machine like yourself ever experience fear? <laughs> Guys, I actually saw a good superhero movie today. Oh, wait. It was Dragon Ball Super Superhero. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? I, I post this on my Facebook and I'm just I'm, I'm making sure I, I read what I wrote or wrote because I was very articulate what I said. And, you know, Dragon Ball Super Superhero is an anime film based on characters from a long standing IP that has millions of fans. And the creator, Akira Toyama, is still around and kicking, doing a pretty good job at it, in my opinion. And he's had some up and downs throughout the history of Dragon Ball. <clears throat> we don't talk about GT as much, but. Look, Dad. <gasps> that mustache has got to go. It makes you look like a total gee. It makes you look like a total gee. Total gee, total gee, total gee. He, he hasn't sold his IP off and given up on it like other people and let people bastardize it or he hasn't died off, thank God, thank Jesus. And, and Akira Toyama knows how to give the fans what they want, make what he wants, and not beat you over the head with a political or gay agenda. And it has an awesome English dub, and the cast of the English dub loves the characters, loves the fans. And, it, you know, it seems kind of like a far-fetched idea, if you're Marvel. Only if you're Marvel, it's a far-fetched idea. If you're Marvel, I guess it's impossible to do something like that. But I'm not gonna get into that here. This is for Dragon Ball Super, Superhero, which is a awesome, fun time of a movie. I give it, go ahead, give it a nine out of 10. Oh, ah! 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 Because I'm a monkey. Ah! For me, Dragon Ball Super Superhero, and okay, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag a little bit. I might be just a teeny, tiny bit biased. <laughs> because I've been a fan of Dragon Ball Z ever since I was a kid. And uh, my dad got me into it. Anyway, um, you know what, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do like Gohan for the movie. I'm gonna take my glasses off for a second. Dragon Ball Super Superhero is a fun, like hilarious, action-packed, great animated film that will like keep you like positive and enjoying the movie. Very fast paced, never really a dull or slow moment. Super, super great. Like, Super being in the name twice kind of does it justice, like, low-key, because um, of the fact that it's, it's like, such a good movie. It's superb. Uh, I've been a fan of Dragon Ball for years now. I mean, I know there's there's there are a lot of people who have been fans of Dragon Ball longer than me. I mean, I'm only 23. That rhyme, don't hit the player, hit the game. Anyway, um, I've been a fan of Dragon Ball since I was five. Like, so I was five or six years old, and I have evolved, much like the characters and the different forms of characters have evolved. I've evolved as a fan of Dragon Ball, and things have changed. Things have changed for Dragon Ball over the years. And I'm telling you, you know, just something hit so different about Dragon Ball Z whenever I was a kid, when I was younger. And then growing up, you know, I just, I was so upset when I found out that Dragon Ball Z was was done and over after like the, the Majin Buu saga. None of the sagas or seasons of Dragon Ball Z are perfect. Well, the perfect Cell arc, 
it's almost perfect. But uh, I was so upset whenever I found out and realized that Dragon Ball Z was the last thing. But then we got, I mean, we got Dragon Ball Z Kai or Dragon Ball Kai in Japan. And we also got Dragon Ball GT. But we don't really talk about GT except for Super Saiyan 4 and Baby. Fusion! Saiyans? They're here. I am they. We are one. Unfortunately for you, Omega. Because that's really one of the things that matter from GT. Anyway, and GT wasn't really written by Kira Toyama, so... But after that, there was really nothing. Dragon Ball was silent for years and years. But finally, back in 2014, 2015, Akira Toyama came back and was writing more and we got Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods and that movie came out and it was a smash hit great film uh the only stuff I don't exactly like about what they're doing with Dragon Ball here lately is like they're they're making them like like gods like there's so-called gods and then there's you know Super Saiyan God and they call them deities and like obviously there's only one god and that's Yahweh anyway but Ever since then, things have been getting better and better and better. You know what? I gave Dragon Ball Super Broly when it came out a couple years back a hard time because they had Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods come out. Then they had uh, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F come out and Frieza came back and everything. Then we got Dragon Ball Super Broly and I gave it a hard time when it came out because I thought it was kind of anticlimactic. And you know what? I think I I think I eat my words because I didn't realize how good we had it when it came out. And I'm going to have to go back and watch it again and enjoy it. This film too, however, this was what I needed. This is literally what I've been wanting from Marvel. What happened? What happened, Marvel? I know what happened. I'm just I'm just still baffled at them. But anyway, I mean, I've been a huge Dragon Ball Z fan for years. Dragon Ball fan and you know everybody loves goku everybody loves vegeta vegeta is my favorite character um and goku you know he's he's all he's my second favorite gohan is literally my third favorite character um and i really do like piccolo too and that's something i'm gonna get into with this is that gohan and piccolo have always been so underrated and underutilized and Akira Toyama has really realized that with this movie. I mean, it took him a little bit too long to realize, but he really realized with this film and he focused on Goku or Gohan and Piccolo 95% of the movie. Literally, one of the first people you see, the first uh, Dragon Ball character that you know that shows up on screen is Piccolo. Not Goku, not Vegeta, not anybody else. It's Piccolo. And... Before I get into that, though, I just want to say Goku and Vegeta are in this film for maybe like 30 minutes. This is also spoilers. 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 I, I do spoil. I'm doing spoilers. I'm not doing spoiler free anymore. I'm doing spoilers. So you have been warned. This is about like 10 minutes into the video. You've been warned. Spoilers. Like I said, we open up and you automatically see antagonist you see kind of the bad guy but he's not really a bad guy of the film his name is dr hedo and you see this bee flying around that like he's controlling this like filming and spying on other people but you also see uh a backstory a little video that or little montage that has to do with the red ribbon army and all this other stuff they create androids super smart and they create them to try to take over the world for, and make the world in their image pretty much the return of the red ribbon army is near um and that they've been a thing for years ever since goku was a little kid goku took him down years ago and they've kind of resurfaced and gone back into hiding throughout the years um and dr jero is one of the main guys who created the androids and he was around during dragon ball z but he met an untimely end due to the hands of his own creations android 17 and 18 there's a lot of androids by the way and now you see 
Dr. Drew had a grandson and his name is Dr. Hedo. By the way, I really thought Dr. Hedo was like a little kid. Like, like, no, like, no joke. I thought he was a little kid. I, I don't want to seem a certain way, but I thought Dr. Hedo was a little kid. But no, he's just, he's just little. He's like Krillin and Krillin is, is little, little guy. He, the introduction of him and he's a smart bit. He's a smart guy. Uh, he's young, he's actually 24. And you see the remnants of the Red Ribbon Army with this guy named Magenta trying to track down Dr. Hedo and get him to basically make new androids to the Red Ribbon Army and to go after Goku, Capsule Corporation, and all of them because they're apparently evil. And in their eyes, they're evil, but we all know they're not evil. They're all the heroes. He convinces Dr. Hedo that they are evil and to come after them and fight them. And that's where you get the start of the bad guys in the film. Uh, you have actual bad people from the Red Red Army involved, but you have also a not-so-bad guy named Dr. Hedo who is a lot different from Dr. Jiro, and he just gets manipulated into being like a accomplice to all the evil deeds of the Red Red Army. That was a part where I was like, man, you just let him get manipulated like that, but it, it's understandable writing. It's understandable. Like... It maybe they could have done it a different way, but I mean, it, I get it. It makes sense the way they did it. The first Dragon Ball Z character that's known, like, because it's, most of these characters that got introduced in the beginning were new characters. One of the well-known characters, the first one that's well-known that gets introduced is Piccolo, not Goku or Vegeta, nobody else. And let me tell you this, that's fine. Piccolo is a long-standing character too, but he's underrated. He's not used as much. Now, I'm going to get into that here a little bit, too, with what I'm trying to point out. And you see Piccolo, and he's actually training. It's so cute. He's training with uh, with Pan, who, if you don't know Pan, Pan is Gohan's uh, little girl, little daughter. And she's actually, like, three years old in this movie. Like, holy crap. Uh, I didn't realize that Pan had an age uh, age gap, or, like, an, like a age jump because this movie apparently takes place maybe three years after the tournament of power in dragon ball super or maybe it takes place less i'm not sure piccolo is actually training her at three and if i'm not mistaken though i'm pretty sure he trained gohan at three after um piccolo had to well i don't know if he had to but he, piccolo killed goku and raditz with a special beam cannon uh to well, Goku did it like that so that Raditz could get killed. And then after that, Piccolo kind of pseudo-adopted Gohan and trained him as a kid. And now he's training Pan as well. <clears throat> because, I mean, I guess Grandpa Gohan is... I mean, Grandpa Goku is too busy training to train his, his little granddaughter. Hmm, we're keeping that trend going, aren't we? That Goku is like the best dad ever. He's not. <laughs> Piccolo is a better dad than Goku. Or that Goku is the best dad ever. He's not. He's Piccolo is a better dad than Goku. I think I said Gohan actually, but Gohan isn't the best dad in this either. But he becomes a better dad throughout the movie. Uh, and I think that's something else that Piccolo sees. Piccolo sees that Gohan is kind of falling more in the footsteps of his dad of being a bad and neglective dad. And Piccolo's like, "Nah, you ain't doing that." <laughs> but then after that, you see Piccolo, and Piccolo gets attacked by one of these new androids that Dr. Hedo created. And I'm going to say, he created these androids a little quick. That's the one thing I have an issue with. He created them really quick. And then after that, you see one of them, whose name is Number 2, shows up. Number 2 is, like, hilarious. He's great. Like, he's, he's supposed to be a bad guy, but he doesn't stay a bad guy. But I love his attitude and his spunk and his quirkiness. I, know, I love Number 2. Uh, and his name is G uh, Gamma number two, I think. Yeah, Gamma, Gamma number two. And he is just a great character, a great new character that was made for the movie. Loved him. Um, and him, him and Piccolo get into it. And he's just so cocky and arrogant. He thinks he killed Piccolo easily with like this big attack he did. And he just goes off and goes on his way. And you see Piccolo just like leaning back out of some dust and stuff and he's like i'm still here <laughs> and then 
he follows Gemma back to the Red Ribbon Army base, which, you know, Gemma, that was Gemma's mistake. He's being stupid. And Piccolo follows them there, finds out the plot they got going on, and that they're going to go after Gohan and his daughter Pan next. So Piccolo, before all that, though, he finds out what they're trying to do. He goes to um, Bulma, and he's like, hey, we got to warn Goku and Vegeta. We need Goku and Vegeta now, fast. We need them now to try to to combat this threat that's happening. And, you know, that's actually usually what's been going on. Whenever Frieza was resurrected and came back, Goku and Vegeta were training with Beerus and Whis on another planet, and they literally had to phone call them in to get Goku and Vegeta to come in and save, like, Gohan and Piccolo's bacon. You know what? This is what I gotta say. I'm so glad I watched those episodes of Super, because those episodes of Super came out in, like, maybe 2016 or so, and it's taken a while, but... Akira Toriyama must have saw that and been like, I need to make them look better than that. And Gohan and Piccolo definitely got the redemption in this movie. I'm not trying to make this review too long, and I'm not trying to go any more over the plot. But pretty much Piccolo tries to think of what he can do because they can't get a hold of Goku and Vegeta because Whis isn't hearing the call. And then you see Goku and Vegeta, uh, they're training. And Broly is there. I had no, I didn't even realize Broly was going to be in this movie. And Broly is just like such a ticking time bomb whenever he tries to use his power and he can't control it still. Man, I just, I imagine with Broly being a good guy, if he could control that power, basically control his anger, like the Hulk, because you should be able to control your anger, huh? If he could do that, then, you know... Man, Broly would be incredible, like insane. But also it's so crazy and dangerous the fact that if Broly doesn't control his power and he just blows up, it could mean the end of like like a lot of things or it could mean a lot of death and destruction. It's wild. Anyway, um, you see them on Beerus's planet. You see Broly there. You see other people show up. Um, what's her name? From uh from Super Broly, oh, I can't remember her name. She she shows up. the the green girl The green skin girl shows up, and it's really funny that Beerus like looks at her, and like Beerus is actually taking a liking to her, and he's like, "I like this one." And it's like, "What are we doing? What's going on here? Like, what the heck is happening?" It's crazy that little scene happening, but it's funny. But anyway. You see Goku and Vegeta, and they can't get a hold of them. So Goku and Vegeta don't know what the heck's going on. They're just training on Beerus's planet, just just trying to get stronger. And they start actually going to have a fight, because Whis is like, why don't you all three have a have a, like a triple threat fight? Like you, Vegeta, and you, Goku, Vegeta, and Broly. And Goku's like, mm, I don't know about that. I think Broly would destroy the planet. And like, you know, that was actually really smart of Goku to say. Goku's being smart for once. Goku! <laughs> Whis is like, oh, you're probably right. So just you, you go, Goku, you and Vegeta, you have a fight. And they start this fight. And this fight, actually, we get to see some of it. It's actually really good. Really good. You see how much Goku and Vegeta have both grown. And how much that they've, like, grown as, like, friends. Or, like, as, like, rivals. But also, like, it's like they're brothers. It's like an older brother and a younger brother fighting or like like training together like if you like if you think like if they're both kickboxers or both cage fighters or like even if you're thinking like a brother and a younger brother like playing a game together or just training just doing something together and it's it's such a good fight so it starts out really good bunch of cool fight scenes and everything going on and I loved it. Loved the beginning of it. Then after that, um, you see we cut back to Piccolo. And Piccolo can't get a hold of him. He keeps also cutting back to Boma. Can we get a hold of him? Can we get a hold of him? Piccolo's like, what do I do? So Piccolo keeps going and looking for anything he can do to try to combat this new threat. Because he also finds out that Dr. Hedo is creating new androids like Gamma 1 and 2. But he also has a secret, well, not Dr. Hedo exactly. It's more of a magenta. He has a secret weapon 
that is underneath the Red Ribbon Army base, and it is called Cell Max. Cell Max is basically, I don't even know how they created it. This is another problem I had with it. I don't know how they created it. I don't know if they were just collecting DNA from everybody over the years or something. But they created Cell Max, like maximum power. It's He's way more powerful than Perfect Cell. Way more powerful than Final Form, Final Form Perfect Cell. Way more powerful. And if he gets unleashed, it's going to be problems and it could be the end of the whole earth but anyway piccolo's keeps looking for something to do about how do we combat all this red ribbon army stuff and even gamma one and two because gamma one and two are really strong like they needed goku and vegeta at first but then piccolo's like why don't i just get the dragon balls and i'm like yeah yeah and like piccolo goes and gets the dragon balls from bulma because she has had people always like searching for them and getting a hand of them because of what happened with Frieza and Resurrection F. And I love that. that The fact that this movie mentions its past and continuity and mistakes that have been made. And it even talks about like little writing issues during the movie that's happened, but it also acknowledges it and makes a joke out of it and justifies it and makes a joke out of it. I, I at least appreciate that. I at least appreciate that. That if you're gonna have, there's like a little inconvenience or something, you acknowledge it and make a joke out of it. Piccolo get the Dragon Balls, and he's like, I'm just gonna get the Dragon Balls and wish for them, wish for my like unlocked potential to be unlocked. Because he was thinking about back on Dragon Ball Z on Planet Namek when um, the Grand Elder unleashed Gohan and uh, Krillin's maximum potential whenever uh, they were younger on, on Namek. Whenever Gohan was younger, at least. Well, Krillin too, but... Like, whenever Gohan was a kid, I, sh I should say. And... He unleashed their maximum potential, and he went to Dende, who we haven't seen in a long time, and he's like, uh... Dende is a character that's like a guardian over the Earth, and he's a guardian over a place called the Room of, of Spirit and Time, the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. And he watches over it, and he goes and talks to Pic Piccolo, goes and talks to him, and he's like, hey, can you unlock my potential like like the Grand Elder did? And he's like, no, but the Dragon Balls could. And he's like, oh my gosh, yeah, but this is something I had an issue with. Since when can the Dragon Balls do that? And why has nobody done that before? That's crazy. I never, like, I don't know why. I wish somebody would have thought about that a long time ago. And then after that, another thing is Dende straight up, like, sprinkled a statue of Shenron with something and made it to where Shenron could just, he could just make three wishes now instead of one. I was like, but I thought he could always do three wishes anyway. I don't know. And then another thing I had an issue with is that later on in the movie, Piccolo grows big. And they were like, Piccolo, why don't you just grow big like you did whenever you fought Goku in Dragon Ball? And I was like, so when can he do that? And even Piccolo himself, he was like, I forgot I could do that. And I'm like, I forgot you did too. Anyway, get I'm going a little over the place. Piccolo does that, and he unlocks his full potential. And, and Shenron even says also, I unlocked your full potential and a little bit extra. And I, I didn't realize that at first. And I caught it whenever you see another scene in the movie. And, he's, and you know he unlocked his full potential and a little bit extra. Piccolo goes back incognito to the Red Ribbon Army. He also gets hooked up on more Sensu Beans from um, Korin and Yachirobi. Then, when he goes back to the Red Ribbon Army base, he's he's also like uh, doing like a Stormtrooper thing where he's wearing the Red Ribbon Army costume incognito. Nobody recognizes him, which is hilarious because he's also he's also covered up completely though. Like the only thing you can see is his eyes. And he finds out they're going after Gohan and Pan next. And Piccolo actually goes along with this. Because whenever we saw Piccolo earlier on in the movie too, he basically is like Pan's babysitter. Because uh, Videl gets so busy with stuff going on. Gohan's busy. So Piccolo goes and picks up Pan and trains with her and stuff. And is like babysitting her. Almost like he did to Gohan when he was a kid with Goku and Chi-Chi. Uh... And even Piccolo shows up to Gohan earlier on, and he's like, Why are you not trading? You're getting weak. 
Oh, so what if there's Goku and Vegeta? What if a new threat shows up? What Some new world ending evil shows up. What if this? What if this? And he's like, he's railing into Gohan and he needs it. He needs to hear that because he has been slacking. And we need to have Piccolo and Gohan have a have a shining, like, good moment for once. So that happens. Anyway, I'll get on to it in a second. But he was like real, railing it, like, chewing his butt out about it earlier. And now you see it come back because Piccolo knows they're gonna try to go after Pan. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna continue to pretend to be this guard and go along with it. And he also like gets his way into knowing, cause he like tells Red Ribbon Army guys, hey, I know, I, I, I live uh, in a house that's a nearby Goha and I know what he and his daughter look like and all this. And it's just like, how do you know that? And he's like, oh, because I know um, what uh, Hercule's daughter looks like. I, I've seen videos of Hercule's daughter. And I've seen this girl and she looks like her and they just go along with it and they're like you know what it'll make it easier on us so go ahead it was like they were being really careless and stupid there's a lot of moments in the movie where people are being careless or stupid and it comes back to bite them but hey Piccolo and this big tall guy with like like this big tall blonde guy go to try to kidnap Pan from her preschool she's in preschool by the way and this big blonde guy comes up to Pan and it's like, hey, Pan, your mama couldn't pick you up today, so here I am, I'm picking you up. All right, let's go. And then this this three-year-old, this three-year-old Pan, three years old, she, like, gets a big old punch. And remember, she's like a quarter Saiyan. She's part Saiyan. So she gives him a big old punch, like, like knocks him dry, nails him right in the stomach. And she's like, I don't know you. And like, all the Pan is great in this movie. They made Pan like adorable, hilarious, and great because that I was like, that's exactly what you do. That's what that's what you, that's what your kid should do. You see a stranger, run away or punch him, and <laughs> do not do not allow a stranger to come up at you like that. That was that was great. That was hilarious, and I loved it. But she recognized Piccolo immediately, and she's like, Oh, hey, Mister Piccolo. And Piccolo lets Pan knows what's going on. He takes Pan with him, and they go in the ship. They go back to the Red Ribbon Army. The guy wakes up, and he's like, don't tell anybody about this, okay? The blonde guy, and it's hilarious. Then they go in and uh, back to the Red Ribbon Army, and Piccolo tells Pan, while you're here, just act like you're scared and, and you're being kidnapped and in trouble. And the whole time, Pan does it, and she just she's so good at it, and it's hilarious. It's great. There's so many little cute, fun moments with Pan. Like, you need to go watch it and see for yourself. They get Gohan's attention. They show a video. Uh, they First of all, they go up to Gohan, this blonde guy in Piccolo. And they knock on the window, and they got a gun pointed at him, the blonde guy. And he's like, you're coming with us, or else you got it. And then Gohan's like, I'm busy. And he flicks the gun out of his hand. <laughs> and then he goes up to him, and he's like, I'm busy. Get out of my way. Get out of here. But then... He shows Gohan a video of Pan on his phone where she's acting like she's in trouble and peril, but it look, to him it looks like she is. And Gohan snaps. This is the first time he snaps in the movie. And he goes Super Saiyan, or Super Saiyan 2, I couldn't tell. And he attacks the blonde guy. And then you see him power up and he keeps putting a giant, like a bigger, bigger crater in the, in the floor. And it sucks though because it was near their house and like their house kind of went in the crater, Gohan's house. But hey, that was how mad he was about the fact they had Pan, they had his daughter. And he was like, where is she? And then the guys freaking out. I was like, no, 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 please, she's okay. I'll tell you where she is. And then Gohan goes with them. He doesn't know this is Piccolo with him either yet, still. They go along, they go back to the Red Ribbon Army base, find Pan. And then from there on the rest of the movie, Gohan fights the Gammas. The Gammas end up finding out that the guys they're working for, they're actually the bad guys. And they had to be told that because they are. They're 100% the bad guys. Except for Dr. Hedo. Dr. Hedo was just manipulated. Then, going forward from that, you get to where, um, the after the Gammas find out that they're working for the bad guys, they basically turn on them. And they stop fighting... Gohan and Vegeta, or Gohan and Piccolo, 
they stop fighting Gohan and Piccolo, and it's just you, you're saying you're thinking sitting there like, oh, okay, problem solved, it's all good. And before that though, Piccolo was fighting one of the Gammas. I don't like that Piccolo had to to wish on the Dragon Balls to power up and reach his unlock potential, but at least he did. Um, but anyway, he did that. And whenever he's fighting one of the Gammas, he gets thrown down this giant, like, endless pit. And while he's falling down, he thinks back to what Shenron said and everything and all that's going on. And he powers up, and he gets orange. Like, completely orange, and he gets swole. And I even noticed earlier, whenever he got his potential unlock, he got big. He got bigger, he got swole. And I was like, oh, Piccolo's swole. <laughs> and he got big. And he got orange, and his face was even chiseled and everything. And I was like, oh, crap. He means business. Orange Piccolo is here, the Super Namekian. He is here, and he's going to whoop some tail. And he whoops one of the Gamma's tails for a bit. But then, you know, they find out they're working for the bad guys. They power down. And I was like, oh, we're all good here. And literally, Gohan is fighting one of them. He's like, do we win? Like, there's so many moments, man. And Magenta's like, hey, screw it. I I'm done. And he goes to try to unleash Cell Max. And then you see this funny little interaction between Dr. Hedo and him. And Dr. Hedo has skin that's been, like, developed to withstand, like, a bunch of punishment and a bunch of, like, different types of things. So he could get shot and survive. But then also, uh, Magenta has had modification to his body where he's, like, a cybernetic type guy from the, from the chest up. Except for, like, right here. It cuts off. They start trying to fight, but this whole time, Dr. Hedo had this, the, the bee or the wasp that was, like, an android following people around recording things. And he said, one sting from this, it's worse than a gunshot, and it'll kill you instantly. And it's so funny because they were about to fight him and Magenta, and he just like, nah, forget that. He gets him stung in the neck, and he just, he dies from the poison. But this doofus was too busy gloating about it in front of him and he didn't see that that uh magenta was still able to unleash cell max and cell max gets unleashed like full-fledged unleashed he is huge bro so huge and he's like super powerful but one thing that's good is that his weakness is the top of his head but you gotta find the top of his head and like really try to like hit him really hard with a lot of energy on top of his head and crack it to like kill him. And it's it's hard for them to do it throughout the whole thing. He won't sit still obviously and it's hard for them to get a good powerful shot right there to kill him. You see everybody but Goku and Vegeta show up to fight him off. And you see you see Go Goten and Trunks and they're older now, they're teenagers finally. Uh you see Krillin and Krillin's like yeah, I want to fight. I don't. I don't think I want to fight. It's funny, but he ends up fighting anyway. He he gets his. He gets his. Poor Krillin, <laughs> but he he gets his in. He gets some good stuff in. And you also see Android eighteen there. Obviously, uh, Boma's there, but Boma's not not fighting. Um, I mean, I mean that was it. That was only, we didn't see like Yamcha or Tien or anybody. They're, they're just chilling. But anyway, like no 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 cap. This threat would have been too big for them. Way too big. Like, it was it was barely enough for Krillin to survive. Everything to happen. Uh, but Cell Max is just huge. And like, the Gammas also helped fight off Cell Max. One of the Gammas, Gamma 2, sacrifices himself much like Vegeta did. And channels all his energy. And he goes up into space. And then he comes down with all his power to try to kill Cell Max and he was about to hit him right on his head but then he moved up and Piccolo saw it and was like no and he hit him barely on his head but it was enough to like break Cell Max's arm and like cut it off but that was all it did he did all that and it, it didn't work sadly and Gamma 2 does die and pass away like well he dies but he also kind of goes away like like getting snapped and it's all in dust. He didn't get snapped, actually. I'm just, it looked like he got snapped like that. Oh. I don't feel so good. Ah! But 
after that though piccolo comes up with a plan he starts using his you know he's using his orange piccolo form then he gets all big and he's fighting fighting him everybody else is fighting him you see goten and trunks try to fuse and we, we thought we were gonna see uh, teenage go tanks but no they mess up the fusion and it's the fat fusion but they made the fat fusion hilarious he gets his pants blown like in the butt and you see see his butt hanging out a lot it's it's, it's a little much but it's hilarious John? pretty hilarious um but then the biggest thing piccolo comes up with a plan and he starts fighting cell max and he, he's motivating gohan this whole thing has been about motivating gohan even piccolo go along with the kidnapping of panels to motivate gohan because he keeps doing these things to motivate gohan even if it's extreme to get him to unlock his full potential because he's always said Gohan has the potential to be the strongest person in the universe, strongest person on Earth. He even gets Gohan to go to Ultimate at one point, Ultimate Gohan. But while he's fighting Cell Max, Cell Max is just like whooping everybody. And it, at one point, even, uh, even Piccolo in his orange form, he's whooping him and it looks like Piccolo died. And that's like, that's what snapped Gohan. And you literally see a callback to Dragon Ball uh, Dragon Ball Z and the Android Saga whenever Gohan snapped as Super Saiyan 2 and you see the black sky and you see the red line in the middle and then you see it all turn to red as he snaps and you see the ah, like the power up and, and I won't watch this anymore and I don't know what this is. I don't know what the form is. They didn't give it a name or anything. It's not Ultra Instinct. And it's not anything. It might be Ultra Ego. As far as I know, I thought Vegeta only got Ultra Ego. Which is a new form that he has gotten that's like big. Like a big power up. And I thought it might have been Ultra Ego. But I, I have no idea. It's either Ultra Ego or something else, but I think it might be something else specific to Gohan, but he looks exactly like how he did with this, with Super Saiyan 2, with his hair, but his hair's all silver and his eyes are red, and he was like OP as heck, dude. It was incredible. Great callback. Awesome moment. Awesome scene. Piccolo is holding him. He's trying, is holding so Max, and... It's like go on, do it, do it. And it was like a, it was almost like a flashback to when Goku was holding Raditz and Piccolo was about to kill both of them. He was trying to kill Raditz, but he killed both of them with a special beam cannon. And literally, literally, you see these incredible visuals that Cell Max is like making a, like a big energy like ball that is bigger than the Earth, and then he makes it shrink and get really small. And he's about to throw it at Gohan. But then you see Gohan get all this incredible, like, electronic energy coming out of him. And it's it's wild. The visuals are so crazy. So well done. And then you see Gohan doing this. And I freaked out. I was like, yo, yes, he's going to freaking do it. He's going to do the special beam cannon, dude. And sure as heck, sure as heck, while Piccolo is holding Cell Max, Gohan goes, special beam and then he shoots it shoots it right at so max's head right in his brain right at the weak spot boom right through it done dead so max is actually 100 percent gone and dead over the battle's over we got this new amazing form for gohan and literally literally back in dragon ball super back in resurrection f gohan and Piccolo took the j biggest L's ever. They were disrespected and treated badly as characters and as classic characters. And it wasn't even to make anybody else look good except for kind of Goku. And that's been the kind of the issue is that people get made bad to make Goku look good a little bit. 
they redeemed, and people have been wanting this to happen for a while, and Akira Toyama listened and did it. They redeemed Gohan and Piccolo, and Gohan and Piccolo looked like a million bucks in this movie. They got new forms, they got good character development, they grew so much in this movie alone. It helped Gohan realize he needs to be a better dad and be better trained and not be like his dad did. Not neglect his child and not neglect training to be able to protect his planet and live up to his potential. And it helped Piccolo just be able to take care of business if he got to and like get his. Because orange, his orange form is freaking dope. And I cannot wait to see Goku and Vegeta see these forms and see like, what the heck? Vegeta is going to be, it's going to be funny to see Vegeta's reaction. But I don't know if he'll have that big of a reaction. Because I mean, in fact, he's got Ultra Ego now in the, in the manga. But, man, I'm telling you, this movie, man. It, it, then at the end of it, um, it's all happy, happy ending and everything. Uh, Pan's flying around. You see that they're they're setting Pan up to she's gonna be one of the most powerful characters too. And I'm fine with it. I'm honestly fine with it. It's Gohan's daughter. As long as Pan does not make Gohan or anybody else look bad, and they don't go down that route with this. Um, but Gohan like literally got his in this movie, and Goku and Vegeta were still in this movie, but they weren't the main focus. But you know what's awesome is the idea that. Goku and Vegeta are like the main character of Dragon Ball, but they weren't the main characters of this movie. But they were still in it, and they still looked good in it. And they didn't make anybody else look bad, and nobody else made them look bad. That's such a crazy concept, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? How that works? Hey, you can have a you can have a main character, you know, stay relevant over the years and and look great and still be super powerful and a focus of a movie but not the main focus and the main focus can be put on other characters to make them look good and have them have good moments and shine in the movie but they still look good and the the old characters still look good yeah it's, it's, it's not it's not a hard it's not hard to do. It's not hard at all. Besides that, though, if we get to the very end, and you see a post credit scene, a mid credit scene too, and it's Vegeta and Goku are still fighting throughout this whole thing, and it's I I I loved it as a Vegeta fan. I thought it was a little, it was a little, they're right, kind of making fun of it, but it was like they're fighting and they're so exhausted, dead tired, and Vegeta finally gets a final punch on Goku, and he falls back like this, and he just lands on the floor, and Vegeta's like, I did it! I finally beat Jackarot! And I was like, yeah, bro! <laughs> I mean, I guess, but yeah, like, that was hilarious. I loved it. Oh, oh, it was funny. Maybe he technically, technically beat Goku, technically beat Kakarot. And then Goku's on the ground. He's like, ah, I guess you did. <laughs> and he's all exhausted. And then Vegeta falls down too. I'm sure we're going to get another big, big, like, fight or, like, challenge fight between the two or something in the future. It was a great post credit or mid credit scene and all that. And I just love that they're able to do a movie like this and make their characters look good and just have a good, fun time. No agenda, no messaging, and just good characters, good story. Few little nitpicks here and there, but it was great. Nine out of ten, definitely go see it. That's my review of that, and it was an amazing movie. Hope you guys go see it, and definitely give this your money. What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Mason. Oh, don't don't mind that there behind me. Um, that's just something I got cooking up for you later on that you'll see on my gaming channel house of m arcade or i might end up calling it spirals arcade just just search up house of m arcade right now as soon as you see this video right now house of m arcade search it up see what i got cooking up oh yeah i got something else cooking up also by the way my bad so i gotta be quick i'm sorry hold on you just saw my review of dragon ball super superhero and i just had a few last things to to say here First of all, I went with my brother-in-law, and it was an absolute blast going with my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law? Uh, my brother my, my bladder-in-law? 
my brother-in-law. It was an absolute blast going to see Dragon Ball Super Super Hero with my brother-in-law the other day. This is actually a, a little bit more time has passed since then. You know, like JoJo, you know, a significant amount of time has passed. You can see, you can tell my boy, I'm a little more grizzled up. Anyway, some time has passed. But anyway, I'm just going to cut to the chase. The movie was an absolute blast. I loved it. I love going to see it with my brother-in-law. You're going to see the picture here. Bam! And I'm back. Anyway, I love going with him. And it's so cool the fact that I even watched... Uh, I watch other people on YouTube talk about Dragon Ball. I've watched uh, Masenko X, and he even talked about how he loved taking his nephews to it, and his nephews are like, his nephews are younger than my brother-in-law, but they loved it, and the fact that you can, you have something like Dragon Ball that you can bond over with, like, your siblings or, like, nephews or whatever, younger people with you. They don't even have to know that much about it, and then go watch it and enjoy it. That's how movies should be. That is how it should be when we go watch, like, superhero movies and other stuff. And we shouldn't have to have to, like, see, oh, is this woke before I take my kids to it? Does it got a gay message or something? Because that stuff shouldn't even be in there, bro. That's why Dragon Ball Super Superhero, go watch it. Go take your brother-in-law to it. Go take your your cousins, your your brother cousins. I don't, I don't know, whatever. It's awesome. And I'm very thankful my dad got me into Dragon Ball when I was younger. And I'm very thankful that we still got Dragon Ball. So the movie was a blast. It was a hit. I'm out of here. I'm going to see you guys later on. I'm rocking the Vegeta shirt, by the way. Of course, rocking Vegeta back there. You know what's up. Anyway, I'm a little hyped up today. I'm having a good day so far. But I hope you guys are having a great and blessed day. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Jesus loves y'all. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And Godspeed. Love you guys. Peace. I got to make it or make it. I got to make it or make it. Yeah. I got to make it or make it, man. These are the options. These are the options. I got to make it or make it. I got to make it or make it. I got to make it or make it. I gotta make it or make it. I gotta make it or make it. Yeah. I gotta make it or make it, man. These are the options. These are the options. I gotta make it or make it. I gotta make it or make it.